what's up you guys, it's Premiere Gal here and today I'm going to be showing you Premiere Essentials by Rampant Design and Adobe Premiere Pro. It is a pack of 120 different presets that will really complement your production flow from bumps, shakes, transitions, letterboxes, all of these effects I used in that opening sequence that you just saw. And in this tutorial I'm literally going to walk you through each effect that I added to produce that opening sequence, okay? And a couple things you should know, I've included the stock footage that I used in the opening sequence in the, in the description box below. It's 100% in the public domain from pixabay.com. I've also included the Premiere Pro project file that you guys can use to follow along. Also, you need to be using at least Adobe Premiere Pro 2014 and above to use Premiere Essentials, and it could be on a Mac or PC. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you guys, so I'm inside of Premiere Pro here, and here I'm gonna play you what the opening sequence looked like before I added all of Rampant Design's effects. So as you can see, each shot has different coloration. There's nothing really going on. It's just a basic montage. There's no effects, you know? So let's go ahead and make this sexy with Rampant Design. So to get Rampant Design inside of your project panel, go to your effects tab in your project panel, and you're going to right click on the presets here, and you're gonna click on import presets. And this is where you can choose the, the preset file from the download folder, okay? So I've already imported it, so I'm just gonna hit cancel here because it's already here in my presets. Um, right here, it's called Rampant Premiere Essentials V1. So if you just hit this little arrow down here, you'll see a bunch of different folders here with all sorts of awesome effects from bumps and shakes all the way down to transitions. So I'm gonna show you at least one effect from each of these folders. So the first thing I did was create a look, a film look, and which is under rampant effects, okay? So I went to quick looks and I chose the dream look, okay? So what I did was I clicked and dragged and dropped this on the first shot here in my timeline. After you drag and drop it and you go up to effects controls, if you don't have that open, you'll see that the the preset, the look, the quick look, came with three different presets to create that look, okay? And you can completely customize this if you want to. And I wanted to make it look more faded, so I just went under contrast and made this minus 30 to make it more of a faded look, okay? So then I wanna copy this look on all the other shots here. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command C, then right select the four other clips here and right click and I'm going to paste attributes and hit OK. So now you can see that these other clips here now have that sort of dreamlike look, okay? So what's the next thing that I did here? The next thing I did was add a letterbox. So this added um, bars on the top and the bottom. It, it just sort of cropped the frame a bit, okay? So you'll notice here that I, I created a white mat underneath. If you wanted to create a white mat, just go down here to new item and create color mat. And you hit okay, and then you can select whichever color mat that you want. So as you see here, if I double click on my mat, I made it sort of this sort of whitish gray. So I placed this underneath all of the clips, so that way I'm not getting black bars on the top and the bottom when I create a letterbox, but white bars. So let me show you what I did. Under effects, you're gonna go to rampant letterboxes, and I selected the 2.4 to one ratio letterbox. So I'm literally going to click and highlight all these clips, and when you drag and drop this, it'll apply it to all the clips here in the timeline. So now you can see that some rendering does need to happen here, but now I have the white bars on each clip here. So next, what I'm going to do is do the bump in effect that I started off this first clip with. So if you go over here into your project panel, you're gonna go to bumps and shakes. And what I used was the bump effect medium with blur. So I clicked that, dragged it on this clip. So what I'm gonna do is just render this first clip for you so you can see what that bump in looks like. And you can completely modify this. So you see here after it rendered, it created this really cool bump in effect to go along with the music, right? So it looks really nice. And then what I did was I added text to make it more dynamic here. So I created a text previously here called Premiere Essentials. And I'm just gonna drag this title on top of the footage. 
So I added the text here, right? So I'm going to click on this clip and I'm going to add an effect to the text to have it animate in. I'm going to use one of Rampant's transitions here. So if I go under the folder Rampant Transitions, what I used was the roll in from right. So I'm going to click and drag this onto the clip here. So you can see that there's two parts of this effect from the roll in from the right. You can notice that because it says roll in from the right in parentheses here as well in the offset. So you can adjust the sort of speed of the effect by pulling it in, it becomes faster. If you pull it out, it becomes slower. So I'm going to pull it in to be a little bit faster here. And as you can see, now you'll have to re-render it again. For the sake of time, I'm just going to keep moving along here and then we'll render it at the end to see how it looks, okay? So the next effect that I added inside of this opening sequence was a strobe effect on this guitar. So as you get that, like when the guitar comes in, it has that nice um, rhythm and I wanted to sort of match that with the strobe light. So what I did was I went to rampant fades and flashes. And if you scroll down, there's a strobe effect, okay? I'm gonna just go ahead and drag that strobe effect here. And I also added a jitter effect to sort of move with the beat of the music. So I went to bumps and shakes and I took a jitter effect times three. I'm just gonna drag and drop it on there. And then in the actual final design, you'll notice that I have different frames happening to sort of break it up and make it kind of, kind of cool to look at. So to do that, what I did was I duplicated the clip by hitting option, click, drag and drop. So now there's two of them. So after I duplicated the clip here in the timeline to add that effect where it comes in from the left and from the right, I selected two frames left in on one layer. And then on the second layer, I did two frames right in. So now you can see that they slide in like so. And then I added just two lines as title layers on top of this. So I created um, two lines with the title tool. I'm just gonna drag that line up here. And I'm going to drag the bottom line on top here. And I also added transitions to this as well. I selected the blur in from right transition. So blur in from left on one on the line bottom and the blur in from right on the top layer. So now you can see that they both come in like so, right? And you can adjust the rate at which the lines come in. If you want, if you select the line top, you can click and highlight these keyframes here. And if you drag it in, you can make the effect go faster, okay? And you can do the same with the bottom one as well. Click, drag, highlight, pull it in so it's faster, okay? You can also drag it out to make it slower. Now moving on to the wave shot here. So I also created a bump effect at the beginning of this to sort of go with the rhythm of the music. Again, when you're editing stuff like this, it's really important that you select the music beforehand because you're really editing to the beat. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo everything and sort of adjust the effects. So that's one big advice point that I have for you here. So on the waves, I created a bump in effect. Let's go to the folder here, bumps and shakes, and I did a bump effect large with blur. Just dragged it on here. And then I also added a little white flash in here towards the end just to give it that little extra edge. What I did was I went to um, fades and flashes and I went down to white flash and I just dragged and dropped this effect on the wave clip. And now if you go under your effects controls, if you scroll down here, you can see um, the white flash effect is here and you can actually move it, move these keyframes to occur at a later point because I want it to occur towards the end of the clip. And I'm going to drag this effect closer. So you can see here that this is where it fades in, the white flash. And I want to take this other keyframe and drag it closer so the effect happens really fast. I'm gonna click and drag on all three keyframes and drag it towards the end here. So I'm gonna have a white flash towards the end. To really see it, I need to render it, but you'll see it at the end, the white flash and how it happens, okay? So after the wave flash, I then move on to the next section where it's like the lyrics come in and it's like, Fee, 
on the ground. And so I have the feet slide in from the top. To do that, I select the feet clip. I go over here and I go down to transitions. Now this is a transition in. So I'm going to select slide in from the top, slide in from the top, and it happens sort of slowly. So what I do to change this is just drag this keyframe in here in the effects controls. So it happens a lot faster. You can play around with that just depending on the speed. And then I have a text file come in um, that I created before called feet. And then to create a cool effect, I did a bounce in from the bottom on the feet. So then I go back to the effects controls and I select bounce in from bottom because it's a transition in effect. Drag and drop it on here. And then you can see the feet bounces in. Again, I would select all of these keyframes and just drag it in so it happens faster. Okay, so you can see now kind of roughly that it bounces in like so. So then I wanted to create a transition out effect to go to the other beat shot. And I did a shuffle out right effect on both the feet, the feet shot and the feet text. So I did shuffle. So first we need to go to the transition out folder and go to the shuffle out right. Okay. So this one right here, I'm going to drag and drop it on the beach and I'm going to drag and drop it on the feet. Okay, so the feet shot here, the first one is going out to the right. Okay, and now I want this beat shot to come in to shuffle in from the left. So what I'm going to do is go to my transition in here and go down to shuffle in from left and drag this on the clip. And again, you can speed up the transition here if you like. Just pull in these keyframes in to make it go faster as I've been doing so far. And then because I want it to seem more fluid, so as this transitions out, I want to start to see the beat shot come in from the left. So what I have to do is actually play around with the layers here of these clips, drag this up, drag this down, and actually pull this shot closer in, just change the actual placement of it. So you can see that it starts to transition in as the feet transition out, okay? And then I have a text coming in, right? Called on the ground. So let's go back to the project and let's select on the ground. I'm gonna place this on the timeline, drag it in. Let's make this a little bit bigger here so you can see the full placement. I'm going to bring this text down, drag it over. So now I want the text here on the ground to roll in. So let's go back to the effects. Again, under transitions in, you're going to go roll in from right. All right, so the last thing that we have to do here just to wrap up this tutorial is just a transition out again. And I had a roll out. So let's go down to transitions out and let's select roll out to right. Drag and drop it on that clip and drag and drop it on the bottom clip. And again, you may want to adjust the temporal keyframes to be a little bit faster here. So you, again, roll out right, you want to adjust that so it's quicker. And then on the ground, we want the same to happen so it rolls out faster. So then if we render this, to render the timeline, all you have to do is hit enter, return. Okay, now that it's done rendering, let me just go ahead and select the program viewer hit the tilde, tilde, tilde on the program viewer, and then I'm just gonna play it back. And this is the sequence with all the effects added. And I hope that you guys found this Premiere Essentials tutorial useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please subscribe to this channel. I make new video editing and production tutorials every week. And if you have any tutorial requests, go to my website, premiergal.com slash tutorials and leave your request there. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. So what is a live text template? It's essentially a motion graphic text uh, template that you make inside of After Effects and you can edit the text inside of Premiere Pro.